right, finally got Chevy Volt into the shop. Um, was a complete disaster. Say, oh wow, this looks nice. Why would anyone get rid of this perfectly good Volt? Um, yeah, this was the fun part about getting it on and off the trailer. Um, anyways, we're gonna go through, check out the components. Um, put a jump pack on it, but the key is not being detected, so can't test anything. Um, but here we are, starting here. We'll probably start with disconnecting the uh, high voltage system, so no one gets electrocuted. All right, here we are, Chevy Volt, bunch of parts, and uh, for fun, pulling out the motor. Maybe somebody will want this. Maybe we could use the electric motor. Who knows? But uh, there it is, a thousand wires and coolant hoses later. Free at last, free at last. After we harvested all of the components from the Chevy Volt, we laid them out onto this pallet. Uh, in the lower left hand corner you could see the DC to DC converter. On top of that is the EVCC, the charge controller. Um, above that on the top of left hand corner of the pallet is a regular 12 volt battery. In the lower section of the pallet in the center you could see a J1772 charge port. To the right is the charger and in the upper right hand corner is a coolant reservoir and coolant pump. Um, and that's circulating coolant down to the battery pack on the right hand side. In order to start a charge cycle for these batteries, um, it first starts with the J1772 port. Um, you plug in a uh, power connector that mates with that and uh, through the pilot and proximity wires it sends a signal to the EVCC, the charge controller, um, saying that uh, the receptacle has been uh, plugged in and connected. Um, that triggers the charge controller to turn on the charger, um, but it also has a signal out to our battery management system saying that a charge has been enabled. Um, the way we have this set up is we want the battery management system to say, okay, everything's okay to be charged, and if something goes awry in one of the cells, we want to stop charging immediately. So um, we have sort of a loop feedback with the char uh, EVCC, the charge controller, um, and that just goes to some 12-volt relays that are clicked on and off by the battery management system. So if everything's okay, the battery management system will keep the relay on, which will keep the loop closed on the charge controller. And if something happens that it doesn't like, then it will cut uh, power to that relay, which will cut the circuit, um, telling the EBCC to shut down the, uh, the charge that's happening currently. Um, all these commands from the EVCC to the charger and also to the DC to DC converter are CAN bus enabled. So CAN is um, a common protocol that's used in um, pretty much every modern vehicle. Um, it's a programming language and it allows um, bytes of information to be sent and, and for feedback uh, to control modules. Um, so it reduces the amount of wires and it increases the amount of information you could send back and forth. So a CAN bus, which is uh, the, the physical wire network that connects these things, uh, the components together, um, is a pair of, uh, of just common electrical wire, but uh, oftentimes they're twisted around each other um, to pr prevent um, outside magnetic feedback to interrupt the signals uh, from other power sources that could be nearby. And so essentially, just like coding, you need to know what all these signals uh, that you're getting and sending out uh, mean. And so the EVCC is a program, uh, or it has a program within it that has uh, interpreted the CAM protocols of both the DC to DC converter and the charge controller. Um, so it sends out a signal through the CAN bus network 
to, to the ch uh, charger. It says turn the charge on, turn the charge off um, when it reaches a certain uh, voltage value. And the same thing, the DC to DC converter, it says, you know, if the ignition is switched on, it sends a can signal, it says, please turn on. So, and uh, this is the amount of voltage that we're requesting the um, DC to DC converter to produce, uh, which is also adjustable, which is nice. Um, so you, you, I think you could put pretty much anything in there up to a certain point, but in, you know, alternators run at slightly different amounts, so you could choose like 13 volts or 14 and a half volts, um, etc. And the way that we wanted the system to be set up, uh, we need to have liquid cooling through the charger and the batteries, um, not only when the charger is on while it's charging, but also uh, when the ignition is on and uh, the batteries need to be kept cool as well. So um, there's a setup we have through relays uh, that essentially comes off of the EVCC. Um, so when the charge cycle is happening, it will um, turn on a, a circuit to a relay that will keep the coolant pump running and the DC-DC converter cooling fan running. And then also, if you're not charging and you turn the ignition on, that same circuit will also come on. Uh, so that way when you, you'll have um, the liquid cooling and the air cooling for the DC. DC come on no matter whether you're in the driving state or in the charging state. This is the test board for the motor and the motor controls. On the top we have a Tesla Model S large drive unit. Um, in kind of the middle towards the right there's a regular 12 volt battery and then uh, right above those two axles on the bottom on the left hand side there's three toggle switches um, mounted to a piece of uh, steel bar and those represent uh, one toggle switch commands drive neutral and reverse signals to the motor controller uh, one is a ignition switch um, simulating when you turn the key on in the vehicle and the third one is actually for uh, the brake pedal simulation. Um, the, in order for the Tesla motor control to have a drive command, you have to have the brake enabled and, the, uh, and then disabled um, in order to start that. Uh, on the left-hand side, all the way to the left, you could see the orange wires go to two contactors. Um, one is for the positive voltage and one is for the negative voltage. Um, further to the left that you can't see in the photo is a complete Chevy Volt battery pack that those are being fed to. Um, there's a large fuse uh, off of the positive contactor between the motor and the contactor. Um, that's for safety protection in case something shorts that fuse will blow. Right below the drive unit the wooden block it's mounted to in the center of the photo there's a yellow square and that's the relay for the pre-charge resistor um, which you can barely see mounted in between the fuse and the relay uh, to the board. Um, in the Tesla drive unit there's very large capacitors and if those aren't previously filled with voltage and you and you turn on the high voltage to them then uh, current will run extremely quickly to fill those up and potentially could um, you know explode so in order to prevent that from happening you have a small circuit that has voltage running through a uh, in this case i think it's a hundred watt resistor um, around 50 ohms um, and that prevents a surge of current because it only runs through the, the resistor um, for a few seconds, fills the capacitors, and then the main contactor afterwards closes, letting full high voltage into the unit uh, for driving. All the way to the right side of the photo, um, where I think it's the, I can't tell if it's the positive or negative battery terminal, but all the way just under that battery terminal, uh, you could see uh, is the accelerator pedal um, and I think that's also I have a Model S that's sold with the kit with the motor controls um, so that uh, accelerator pedal and these uh, 12 volt inputs from drive neutral reverse brake switch and ignition are all put into a wiring harness that goes to uh, the motor controller and then add the motor controller to a 23 pin harness that's uh, on the on the Tesla 
Um, there's also an encoder, which is a four pin harness on the opposite side of the uh, model S drive unit from the 23 pin connector. And that's what actually senses the rotation of the motor and gives feedback to the motor controller, telling it the exact position of uh, where the motor is at any given moment. Now that we've bench tested the charging system and the control system for the motor drive unit, uh, we are going to go to the next episode, which will be stripping the 300D, finding space for all these components. So stay tuned. <laughs>